In this tutorial, we're going to look at the uh, hypershader. So to get to the hypershader, we go up to uh, Windows, Render Editors, Hypershader, or we can access it through this little button here, which will bring up the hypershader as well. So I'm just going to do that. Double click on the top, so it expands. And by default, uh, the hypershader will look uh, something like this. So up the top here we have our materials, but not only does the hypertrader allow us to look at networks um, of materials, but also we can see textures, we can see lights, cameras, and you can even manage your project file through here as well. Um, we're going to focus on materials. So within here I can change the way all this looks by clicking on different icons um, and you can also use bars you can make them bigger so you can read exactly what what it is and so forth so it's quite adaptable generally speaking something like that is pretty good so we can see what's going on um, if I click on the material it will come up in the material viewer as well as the property editor uh, if uh, if your computer is running pretty well, I suggest changing it from hardware to say Arnold or Renderman or uh, Mental Ray, depending on what renderer you've got available. Um, and in here we can change things like bring in some image-based lighting and uh, can see how that might respond to that material. So let's do an interior neutral, no, let's neutral, let's go colored interior. And you can also change it to whatever type of object you might want as well. So I'm going to go shader ball. Okay, so from here, uh, underneath we can check out our common material attributes. Uh, notice I've got quite a few down the bottom here. You may have something more like that, which is the abbreviation. Uh, to bring out the extra attributes that you can change, we click on here, and you'll notice that it's um, exactly like the attribute editor, um, just for this particular material though. Okay, so the first common material attribute is the color. I can quickly change that change the color. Underneath that we've got transparency. The more white it is, the more see-through it is. Uh, ambient color is kind of like uh, the color that um, goes around the surface, um, if that makes sense. And incandescence is is the, the attribute that sort of, you know, gets emitted. So it's almost like it's emitting light. Um, see if I can bring that up and see some results in there. If I bring up the value a lot higher then uh, I should be able to see it happening there. It's a bit hard to see there. Anyhow, I'll just bring that back down to default. Um, underneath that is a bump map and uh, we'll look at that when we're creating uh, shader networks and, and so on. So there's a few other attributes that um, we can change in there as well. So by default uh, we have one Lambert and we also have the particle cloud and the uh, shader group. But if we want to make extra materials we can go up to create materials and the main three materials that uh, we will be utilizing is the Lambert which is like a mat um, and then there's also the Blin, which is like a you know gloss, um, and then there's the Fong, which is like a high gloss. Uh, generally speaking, though, a lot of people just use Blin, and then change the parameters for for the different ones. Um, now, once you've created a material, you can actually change its material type um, utilizing this drop-down menu right here. So we can go in and change to be something else. But let's just stick to uh, Blin. Now Blin 
is has some extra attributes, um, that being the specular shading, and in the specular color, this is like the the highlight. So it's it's like faking the reflection of the highlight. It does have um, a reflectivity as well, and you can see that is set to 0.5. So if I put that up to one get more of a like a chrome ball look or really quite reflective um, where if I put it down to like 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 let's say it's more of a dull dull shine to it um, if I reduce down the specular color it will be not as uh, shiny on the highlight as well Okay, so besides the Blin and the Lambert, the other one that um, is interesting to use is the Anastrophic, um, which is more like a uh, brushed metal. So if we just get the Anastrophic to load up the preview, it's just having a think about it because it's still kind of trying to render it here so I'll pause it there there it goes loads that up and you can see the difference between say the fong so this is the highlight this is the specular highlight in um, these basic materials now uh, with the anostropic uh, you can see that it's sort of um, more distorted it's bent and it's kind of stretched out um, which gives you like a, a brushed metal or a chrome sort of effect which can be quite good. Uh, let's bring up another one, let's bring up the blend as well so we can compare a few of them. There's the Fong. Uh, the other one that uh, might be useful is the Fong E which is a little bit more uh, controls around the uh, specular so we get that extra ability so um, for really high high gloss uh, plastics and, and so on um, alrighty so let's have a look now at the workspace down the bottom here um, in here we can clear it all out by clicking on there but if we want to have a look at a particular material we can load it in we can load it in by clicking on here clicking selecting the object uh, material and loading it down into our workspace this workspace can be moved around quite a bit as well and um, uh, just like your windows inside of Maya control middle mouse button to uh, track dolly in and out is the right right mouse button and that's it um, or you could use the zoom uh, the uh, rolling roller thing on the, on the uh, top of your mouse alright so let's turn that back on uh, just a couple of things if you are missing your material viewer you can always go up to windows and load up the material viewer from here and that will bring it back uh, it is a bit tricky getting things to go back into a, the right space but I'll just demonstrate how I've done it in the past so I've just closed both those two off if I bring up the material uh, viewer or sorry the property editor first I've find this works a little bit easier move it over to where I want it to go and make sure it goes down the bottom and then drop it into that area so the same with the uh, material viewer now because it's sort of updating to stop that updating I'll just put it to hardware and then if I move over I can easily drop it in to there. You tend to have a bit of trouble if you keep it on to the uh, the renderer because it sort of auto up it's updating and it just sort of freaks out a bit. So um, that's the hyper shader. Uh, 
over here we've got the create render nodes as well so all the render nodes that uh, we can access through um, the materials is you know can be found there as well okay so let's have a look at how we can uh, use the hypershader effectively within our workflow and um, help us uh, to do this I'm going to uh, open it up inside a window of my uh, Maya project file so you can see everything. Um, ideally speaking you can put it onto an external uh, monitor which is a good way to work um, but because I'm just doing one screen I'm going to show you how I lay it out. So I'll do uh, two side by side, uh, two panels side by side and I'll change this panel to be perspective and I'll change this panel to be the hypershader. So under panels and find hypershader, there's my hypershader there. And I'm not going to worry about the material viewer, so I'm just going to turn that off. And also the property editor, I can use the one over here, so I'm going to turn that off as well. I'm just really interested in these two areas, like so. Okay, so here's my still life. If I want to apply a material to these objects, I can of course select the object, right click and assign existing materials or I can even assign a new material and that will open up the material, uh, render node window and we can go into Maya materials, select our material that we want to use and, and so forth like that. Select the object, right click on the over the material and go assign material to select it and so that's now been assigned. Um, in addition to that we can actually grab our material middle mouse dra button drag and drop it onto the object as, as well. If we want to see a preview of our textures we can press the 6 key which will turn on textures or the little icon here is the little checkered box and appropriately I'm going to assign a checker to it like so. Um, so yeah we can quickly throw down materials onto different objects and um, you know assign them that way as well. Uh, if you want to know what material is on an object if you select an object and then come down to the working space and graph the material you will then be able to see what material is associated to that that particular object um, which is a really handy way of working as well. So that concludes a quick sort of overview of the hypershader and workflow methods that can utilize the hypershader in assigning new materials to objects.